Hello everyone, welcome back to Into Sports. I'm your host Evan. Today I'm going to go through my top 5 quarterbacks in the 2022 NFL Draft. But before I do, do me a big favor and click the subscribe button because, well, it would help me out a lot. Anyways, let's start with number 5. Sam Howell from North Carolina. Now this was probably the toughest evaluation for me out of these 5 guys. Because his team in 2021 was awful. And then in 2020, he had good weapons, but his offensive line was terrible. So he was constantly having to play hero ball at North Carolina. And he was in a very, what I call, college offense anyways. It was a ton of RPOs, screens, and go routes down the sideline. So we didn't really get to see him stand in the pocket and go through progressions and make traditional NFL throws very often. But what you do see instantly is the arm strength. He can really drive the ball outside the numbers. And he can effortlessly get the ball downfield outside the pocket. His arm strength is the best part of his game. He can simply drive it into windows that a guy like Kenny Pickett just can't. The other part I like with Sam Howell a lot is his deep ball. He drops it right in the bucket very often. And when he doesn't, it's normally just barely out of the receiver's grasp. Now, the hesitation for me and why I don't see him as a first round quarterback is lack of anticipation and lack of progression throws. I saw a guy who was mostly a one read and go quarterback. If he didn't see his first receiver open, he would scramble. And that's partly the offense and the situation that he was in which makes him a tough evaluation, but it was also partly him. He was too antsy in the pocket at times, and he needed to see receivers open before he threw it. He had a tendency to be a little hesitant with his decision-making, which led to sacks, and then he lost control of the football at times and had some bad misses. He has good athleticism, he runs it quite a bit, he shows you his toughness, he gets his bell rung multiple times per game, but he hung in there and kept making plays. But the other four quarterbacks that we'll talk about, they're all good athletes too, and actually even better athletes than Sam Howell. So I see a day two quarterback here with Sam Howell. The Baker Mayfield comparisons that you might hear are actually incredibly accurate in terms of the characteristics they both have, but Howell is not on that level just yet in terms of his overall game. So he's at five. Number four, Kenny Pickett from Pitt. If I needed a quarterback to play in a game tomorrow, Kenny Pickett would be that guy. He is the most pro-ready day one NFL quarterback. He was in an NFL spread style offense at Pitt, and he's very quick to process and make decisions. That's one of the strengths of his game. He's also really good in the pocket. He has active feet and almost always leaves the pocket at the right time. And to go along with that, he has legitimate speed. So when he does escape, he can turn the corner on you and pick up chunk yardage. But then the other thing I like about Pickett is that he doesn't just use his athleticism to scramble and pick up yards, but he has so many plays where he gets outside the pocket and makes a quality throw on the run. But there's a reason why he's number four on my quarterback rankings and why he's not a total slam dunk first round draft pick to me. It's because his arm is below average in terms of NFL starting quarterbacks. When you look at the 32 starters, he would rank towards the bottom of that list. It's not awful, but he's towards the bottom. And he has the weakest arm out of these five quarterbacks that we'll talk about. And when you see that come into play is in his decision making. He can't rip it into windows, down the field, and outside the numbers like the top end of NFL quarterbacks can. Or even like my number one, our number two guy can. I think he's just a little too content to take the four yard completion for my taste. He has good touch and he can float a 50-yard ball downfield on a go-route, but when it comes to 
driving a ball up the seam before a safety can close, that's where he's a little bit limited with the arm strength. So I think at worst, he's a solid backup, and at best, he's a solid starter. I just don't see the high-level upside that really intrigues me, although he's definitely worthy of being in the first-round conversation. And now we go to number three, Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati. And this is a guy who I also think is NFL ready. Now, I don't think he's as polished as Kenny Pickett, but I rank him higher because he has better physical tools. Both Ritter and Pickett have similar speed, but Ritter is just a more powerful runner and then his arm is just a level above. He can get it down the field on a line. And that's not even his elite trait. To me, his elite trait is his anticipation. He makes a ton of throws before his receivers break. And it's not just anticipating the first read. He makes plenty of throws throwing with anticipation on his second and third read. And that's NFL stuff. So I think the combination of his processing, his anticipation, and his arm strength leads to a ton of NFL legit translatable throws that we can see on Sundays. Now, there are a few drawbacks to Ritter, but they were pretty minor. First, he puts the ball in harm's way a little bit too much, but generally I'd rather have a quarterback that's a little too aggressive than one that's a little too passive, so I don't really mind that too much. And then the other thing is that I wish he made more throws outside of the pocket because I know he has the talent to do so, but I just wish we could have seen more plays outside of structure kind of carrying the offense. But regardless, I still think Ritter is a back end of the first round caliber quarterback prospect. Then at two, this is where we go up a notch with Matt Corral from Ole Miss. He's a top 10, top 15 pick to me. And the first thing you see is his release. It's as quick as anybody in the sport, college or pro. Aaron Rodgers has the quickest release I've ever seen, but Matt Corral is right there with him. And quick is really the word that can describe Corral's entire skill set. His feet are incredibly quick in the pocket. He's always ready to throw. He has legitimate speed. He can make big plays with his legs. There's just so much urgency and quickness in his game. And then the other thing is the arm strength. Between the arm and the release, he can throw it down the field into tight closing windows. And he can also throw it down the field without needing space to step up in the pocket. And then his movement within the pocket is also great. So clearly there's some serious high level talent here with Corral, but there are some negatives. And they're really all fixable, but they do exist. First of all, there was too many missed throws. He made some of the short game stuff a bit harder than it needed to be with his ball placement. And then he missed a little too much in the intermediate game as well. And then he left a couple of touchdowns on the field with his deep ball. So Matt Corral missed a little too much, but he did have actually a ton of perfect throws a lot of tight window strikes but then again he had some that got away from him and then some of the misses were because of another problem he always uses his driver he needs to throw with more touch and trajectory at times use the seven iron when appropriate to make a golf analogy everything can't just be the driver trying to hit it 300 yards off the tee box and Macaral could also be a little too reckless at times. Now, it's not a big deal, but he did take some bad chances and put the ball in harm's way a little too much. Now, I have heard this talk about his system at Ole Miss being too RPO based and that everything he did was on the first read, similar to kind of Sam Howell. Both were in typical college looking offenses. And that's true. As I was editing this and trying to find plays to put on the screen, it was really hard to find quality throws past the first or second read. But that being said, the talent is there. And the footwork and the movement is at the level where I think 
he can develop the progression stuff. So I'm in on Matt Corral, and I'd be willing to take him in the top 10 if I needed a quarterback. But he's not my number one. Because my number one is Malik Willis from Liberty. This is a guy capable of making video game-like plays. He has a great arm. He's the best thrower on the move out of these five guys. He has very good speed, and he broke a ridiculous amount of tackles. So Malik Willis was an absolute highlight machine at Liberty. Now, here's where we have to mention the level of competition. Because yes, he is a powerful runner, but the tackles he was breaking against UAB, for example, he was not breaking against a team like Old Miss. So he is the most dangerous runner out of these quarterbacks, but he's not going to look like Derrick Henry against NFL competition in the same way that he did look like Derrick Henry against some of the lower level competition that he played at Liberty. But He's not number one because of his legs. That helps. But he's number one for me because he makes so many dynamic throws with his arm. Within the pocket, he throws strikes down the field. His deep ball is very good. He has great touch on the deep ball. And he's able to drive the ball without needing space to step up in the pocket. But what he does outside the pocket throwing is the best part of his game. We've seen in the NFL that the quarterbacks that extend plays, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, those are the guys dominating the sport. Well, Malik Willis has that kind of play extending ability. He's an elite off schedule playmaker. Now, I think the perception about Malik Willis is that he has a high ceiling, but a low floor. But I actually think his floor looks something like what we saw from Jalen Hurts in his rookie season. And I think he's more gifted than Jalen Hurts. So I don't see him as a boom or bust prospect. And that's because he's almost able to live outside of structure and make plays on the move like Jalen Hurts did his rookie year. I think his rushing ability raises the floor of whatever team he's going to be on. So I think early in his career... As he develops within the structure of the offense, he'll be able to make enough backyard football type plays to be effective. Now, in order to reach his ceiling, he needs to play with more urgency in the pocket and trust his arm more to let it loose, as well as staying in the pocket longer and not bailing too early, looking to throw, looking to run a little bit less. But I really like Malik Willis. He's worth a top 10 pick in my eyes. I think the floor is kind of Jalen Hurts-like, and then the ceiling is a star.